Hey, so I'm still making a video game, but I'm starting to hate looking at it. Don't get me wrong, I'm having fun with it. I get to waddle around and hack cubes to bits, but it's just not selling me on the mood. Nothing about this really screams gritty sci-fi or tense action other than the chunky bits. Homefront needs a change-up, a facelift, a whole new- Has that been off the whole time? <laughs> So, I've been a bit busy. As you can see, I've made a little upgrade to the test level. I've begun creating an early sample level, an abandoned auto shop and scrapyard. It's been shut down recently and left to ruin, but there's something valuable to your escape plan that's still left on the property. It's still in progress, even this level will eventually double in size. All of that in due time. But first, how did we get here? Also, where is here? This new level is meant to serve as an introductory experience for the player about dealing with our QB foe. This means chronologically, the level takes place pretty early, which also means the player has yet to explore deeper into the heart of the city, and still has limited tools available to them to deal with this new opponent. Okay, a bit much already, but let me break down the pieces and show you what's been tinkered with. We got props! I've got a couple here in various stages of doneness. Some materials and models are still to be done, but I think the art first pass kicks ass. I first focused on the assets that were large and generic enough to use as cover while skulking about. Things like vehicles, crates, dumpsters, and panel boxes. Making these first will help block out important cover layout, as well as flesh out a library of reusable assets that will help speed up each level's creation the further along the project is. The minor detail meshes and level-specific set pieces can come later. Coffee, anyone? Next up is the backdrop buildings. Keep in mind, Omfront takes place in a gigantic city. Anyone could get lost in this concrete jungle. Keep yourself grounded with some of these towering landmarks. These buildings in particular are from Kitbash 3D's Future Slums pack, and I'm loving how crumbled it all looks. Just the right amount of ruin for the outer city edges. I've noticed during gameplay, the camera may swing a little close to these buildings, so for now I've added a shader on their material that clips the alpha based on scrolling scan lines and distance from camera. Granted, these are pretty tall and detailed buildings for a game with such a low gameplay camera angle. How might the splendor of decrepit architecture be shown through the game? Puddles, baby! Big props to Siconia Studios for this one. I'd been researching for a realistic water shader made for shallow puddles in the outdoor environments for a while. This shader is a beastie to configure, but is fortunately very modular. For instance, puddle placement was randomly generated by a noise map, but through a bit of height map black magic, they actually now fill up in the dips and pits and terrain. I tried putting in some reflection probes on this material too. Set it to real time, and... Huh, maybe one huge terrain mesh should have more than just one probe, I guess. Well, baked it is. So that's the derelict auto scene, one that I'll be sticking with for a while. It has enough features and functions planned for it for some nice looking artwork, functional scripting, and can serve as a benchmark for visual quality and system performance. I'm already afraid to touch that thing. These are just what I've got to share for now. There's a handful more in this scene that's still being dressed up. I'll let you know when they're decent. If you want to see more in the future, you know what to do. Take it easy out there.